Hello everybody, it's Julia here from the Highly Sensitive Tarot and I'm back today with a hashtag. Um, today I'm going to do a Read This Deck hashtag by the lovely Nova at Nova Luna Tarot. Um, I did have a bit of a go at this before when I was doing um, one of my journal videos about the witch's wisdom, so you could have a look at that. Nova's done a few videos in this tag. Farah Nadila has done um, a couple of videos from this tag. So it'd be great if um, anybody wanted to join in. I think this is a fantastic tag. It's really nice to see people reading their cards and to sort of see and hear their processes, if you like. So today I'm going to have a go with the Tower of the Abyss as this is one of my favourite decks to read with at the moment. And I've done the same as, or I'm going to do the same as Nova did, in that I've picked a card, I've picked a spread from the guidebook. There's two spreads in this guidebook. One is the Abyss spread, which is 13 cards, which I felt was possibly a bit excessive for this video. <laughs> And then there's a six card spread. So I'm going to have a go at that. So I'm going to read you the spread, the idea of the spread. And you can obviously take this reading as your own if it resonates. If there are things that I talk about that resonate, then this reading can be for you. Um, please remember this is a snapshot in time. Um, I'm not tapping into anybody's energy particularly. I'm not trying to. Um, I'm going to be reading the cards um, as if there was somebody sat across from me. Um, and it's a snapshot in time, really. I think that's the important thing to remember when people read cards is it's a snapshot in time. There's no right or wrong. Um, it's down to the interpretation of the person in that moment. And um, we all obviously have very different interpretations of cards sometimes. So and 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 as it should be, you know, that's a good thing. So so it says here. This is a great spread when you're trying to get to the root of a problem. It's a little more complex than the single card draw, but still not too complicated. I especially love to use this spread when I'm having trouble being objective. In this spread, you shuffle the cards, state the question, and then draw six cards. The reading of the cards in order are, what do I know of the problem at hand? What am I unaware of presently? What do I secretly wish? What will the future bring? What shall be revealed? And what will I learn from this? So I'm going to, my intention while I'm shuffling will be to ask for clarity and solutions for the collective for whatever problems you are facing at this current time. So there we go. So let's give these cards a shuffle. So I always ask the universe for clarity for the question at hand for the querying at hand so today I'm going to ask the universe for clarity regarding a problem for help trying to get to the root of a problem so if any of you out there have something that you're pondering at the moment, something that you're not sure what to do about, something that um, something that you'd like some help, some clarity with looking at the future regarding a situation. I hope that perhaps this this reading might help. Now I have some problems with the mobility in my hands and so I'm not the greatest of shufflers. I don't do any riffle shuffling or any um, fancy shuffling. 
and it's not that common that cards ping out when I'm shuffling. Um, if they do, I take them because obviously that's that's energy there. Um, but it's not it's not a common thing that cards sort of pop out really because I'm not. I'm not that flamboyant, I guess, with my shuffling. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the right word, flamboyant. But anyway, they've had a good shuffle. So we would like some clarity and we would like some answers to get to the root of a problem that we are currently facing. So if you wanted to pause the video and have a think about a problem that you're currently facing um, you can do that but I'm now about to um, lay some cards so I always shuffle I lay into three piles um, and then I just pull cards so the first question was what do I know of the problem at hand and we've got I don't know how I'm going to get them all in the screen. And we've got the Eight of Wands. We have the King of Pentacles for what am I unaware of presently. We have the Two of Wands for what do I secretly wish. We have the Three of Cups for what will the future bring. We have the King of Swords for what shall be revealed. And we have Justice, my favourite card, from what shall I learn from this? Now, I'm always a person who looks at the bottom of the deck as well. I think that the bottom of the deck is often the crux of a matter. It's something that is actually right at the core of a matter. So we'll leave that just to the side for now. Um, let's just see if I can actually get these in any better for you. So there we go. I hope you can see these a little bit better anyway. So the first question was, what do I know of the problem at hand? And we've got the Eight of Wands here. So already, when I look at the Eight of Wands, I'm starting to think about astrology and numerology instantly. I know that the Eight of Wands is Mercury in Sagittarius. So that already gives me some information about this card. Um, I know that the keywords for this card are um, movement, speedy, rapid movement, momentum, um, swiftness. So that obviously goes hand in hand with Mercury in Sagittarius, doesn't it? Mercury is um, swiftness, movement, communication. Sagittarius is quite expansive. So there's a real... Um, feeling of movement and swiftness and expansion. So if I was to think about this card in terms of what um, what do I know of the problem at hand, I might say that perhaps life is moving too quickly. Perhaps you've got too much going on. Perhaps it's hard to pin yourself down to any one thing. Perhaps life feels quite chaotic. Um, Perhaps you're trying to move in a certain direction, um, but feeling distracted and caught up in other issues. Perhaps there just is too much going on in your life. Um, so, yeah. So card number two, which is what am I unaware of presently, is the King of Pentacles. So, again, I already know that the King of Pentacles is Taurus. Um, this is a Taurus energy. 
and the key words for the king of pentacles might be responsible and steady they would be those kind of energies um yeah so what was the question what am i unaware of presently well it might be that you're just unaware of just how much you're having to manage at the moment just how many responsibilities you have how much effort it's actually taking to remain steady and stable in the face of so much um, going on in your life. You know, and that would follow on very nicely, wouldn't it, from the Eight of Wands, this kind of swift movement, um, this momentum of life. It could feel that actually you're quite bogged down by the momentum of life at the moment and that you might be finding your responsibility is just too heavy to carry at the moment. Um, that is entirely possible. We've got Taurus there with the King of Pentacles. And Taurus, for me, often reflects um, a steady nature also, hardworking, steady, home-loving, um, a lover of nice things. And um, so for me... I think perhaps this problem might revolve around your home life, around how you're having to juggle your many responsibilities and demands at home. So the third card that we've got here, the two of wands, um, the question for that is what do I secretly wish for? Now with the two of wands, I know that this is Mars in Aries, so that already tells me something. Mars is the planet of war. Aries is a strong and fiery planet, strong and fiery energy. So for me, this card talks of conflict, um, of difficulties around um, difficulties around excuse me, difficulties around trying to plan or strategize or um, work out what needs to come next, I think, really. Um, twos in numerology talk of balance and partnership and unions, decisions, harmony. So there's there's conflict here. There is conflict around perhaps what you know you, that you need to do and perhaps what you might want to do. Maybe that's um, what you're secretly wishing for is an end to this, this difficulty around making decisions, this difficulty around planning and prioritising and strategising and working out what direction you should go next. Um, Perhaps you're secretly wish, wishing that it was all made much more easy for you and you didn't have to stress and worry and um, and perhaps, I don't know, perhaps feel that you're alone with this problem. You know, we've got we've got all of all of the movement and everything going on in the eight of wands there. We've got lots of birds but then we get to the King of Pentacles and the Two of Wands and these people are alone and they're alone carrying the weight of responsibilities. So when we move down to the fourth card, the question is, what will the future bring? And we've got the Three of Cups here. I shall move that up for you. So what will the future bring? And this is the Three of Cups. So I know that the Three of Cups is um, the moon in Cancer. I know that the key words for the Three of Cups would be around growth, um, participation, socialising, um, creativity, groups, um, yeah, so what will the future bring? So it looks like that the future is is feeling more positive actually than perhaps you might fear um if as i said with these first three cards there's a feeling here of feeling quite alone and quite burdened with much responsibility 
But the Three of Cups might imply that there is friendship here, there's support networks, there's groups, there's people, there's people that like you, that love you, that care about you, that want to support you, that want to um, want to offer you cheer, good cheer, as in this card, you know, they're offering you a drink, they're saying come and join the party, come and be part of things, don't feel alone, um, you don't have to make these decisions, you don't have to carry the weight of the world all by yourself. Um, so I'd say that for your future, perhaps some of these feelings of burden and responsibility may ease somewhat. So for card number five, which is this card here, we've got the King of Swords. We've got what shall be revealed as the question. Now with the King of Swords, I know that this is Aquarius energy. I know that the key words of the King of Swords might be analytical, um, being wise, being a good decision maker, being analytical being a truth seeker, um, being concerned with justice. Um, yeah, so what shall be revealed? Well, the truth, the truth will be revealed. Whatever it is that you're worrying about, whatever it is that is burdening you, that you're having trouble making decisions over, that you're feeling pulled apart in different directions. So there's a big feeling of feeling restricted here in your early cards, of not being um, able to fully express yourself. And that may be because you'd been struggling to make a decision or find out the truth of a matter or just work out which direction to go and I think that as card number five here is what shall be revealed and we've got the king of swords well you've quite definitely got a mind an analytical mind that is quite capable of working these things out you've got some support with the three of cups you've got people around you good people that support you and love you um, and you've got a good, strong, analytical mind that is quite capable of working out the next steps, what's coming next. But whatever this is, it's something to do with truth, with honesty, with clarity, with, um, yeah, with things being fair, perhaps. Thing, yeah, I think that's what I want to say. I think things need to feel fairer. Yeah. So the last card we've got here, card number six, is justice. And this is what will I learn from this? Now, with the justice card, I know that this is air energy. This is Libra energy. Um, this is card number 11. Um which would make it a number two in numerology. So again, we're looking at balance, partnerships, duality, harmony, the ability to make decisions. Um, and the question was, what will I learn from this? So you're going to learn that the truth will out, I think. The truth, the truth is always there. Um, in this justice card here, I find it really quite powerful because I think that this I here, you can't escape from the truth of this I here. If she looked into your eyes, she would know your truth immediately. She would know the truth of the situation immediately. She can judge that situation, I think, in the blink of her eye. So what you're going to learn from this is perhaps to take some courage from your own decision making to perhaps, um, and I don't mean this harshly at all or in an, any kind of judgy way, but justice is also about the laws of cause and effect, isn't it? It's about consequences. Um, it's about things being fair. 
Um, so perhaps what you might learn from this situation is that I'm having trouble saying the words. Sometimes what I want to say sounds judgmental <laughs> or harsh. And obviously, if I was speaking to a real person, it would be much easier to explain my thoughts. But my thoughts and feelings around this reading really are that perhaps if this is resonating for you, it could be that you've been in a situation where you have taken on too many burdens you know, there could be issues around um, codependency here in some way that or being a people pleaser in some way that perhaps you have taken on too much. You've taken on too many burdens, too many responsibilities, and you felt very alone with that. Um, and I think that perhaps what you're going to learn from this situation is that you need to maintain boundaries in your life about what you can and cannot cope with, what's fair and what's not. Um, I think there is very much a feeling here of things needing to feel fair. Um, so, yeah, that's a really nice little reading, isn't it, to try and get to the root of a problem. And the problem, like I said here, very much so to me looks one of 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 life being overwhelming of perhaps you not making good choices in the past about your life about what you're about where you're headed about what you're what you're able to cope with and where you're headed and I, I feel that looking at these cards that that has come to that has come to a head a little bit, if you like. And I think perhaps this has been time to reach out to um, to look to other people to support you a little bit, to think very clearly, to get some clarity, to look at what's fair and what's not fair, um, and to use your very brilliant mind to work this situation out to um, perhaps this is a situation where you have known on some level that the path you were following wasn't particularly healthy or correct for you but you've continued and you've now reached a position where you're having to face the truth you know, with the King of Swords here and the Justice card here, you're having to face the truth of a situation. So I think, you know, if I was to give you an overall message from this reading, it would be that the sooner you face up to the clarity of a situation, the sooner you're able to get clarity on a situation, the sooner the torment of the situation can end. <laughs> um yeah, so, and what we had at the bottom of the deck here is we had the Nine of Cups. And the Nine of Cups in astrology is Jupiter in Pisces, I believe. Um, the key words for this card might be contentment, satisfaction, um, things feeling satisfactory things feeling content for you you feeling confident and fulfilled about your life um, in numerology nines are all about fulfillment conclusions understanding fruition attainment so if this is the real um, crux of the matter I think it's like I said it's like you're trying to um or you're desperate for some conclusion, some understanding a situation, or to have some real fulfilment in your life. Because it does feel very much here that there's been a lot of responsibility, a lot of burdens, a lot of um, difficulty making decisions and seeing the way forward. And I think 
what is underlying all of this is this desperate need to reach a good place in your life. You know, like perhaps you've been working really hard in order to achieve something and it's like you're trying to reach some kind of conclusion or understanding to gain something, to bring something to a fruition in your life. Um, to be like this woman here, able to smell all the flowers. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's about all I've got to say um, with this this reading here. As I said, if it resonates, then please do take it as a reading for you. But this is how I would read these cards. I find the Tower of the Abyss quite an emotional deck. I feel that they generally talk to me of emotional issues. Um, and although we've got the King of Pentacles, we've got the King of Swords and we've got the Justice card here. This reading does have a very emotional feel to me here. I do feel that this Nine of Cups here is the real crux of the matter, is that you're trying, you've been trying to keep everything together and um, you've been carrying these burdens because you're trying to to have a certain quality of life, a certain lifestyle, a certain attainment of a lifestyle um, but I think at the moment it's proving overwhelming isn't it and I think that perhaps at the moment you're facing some of the consequences of your decision making um, over time and you've become a little bit overwhelmed so um, I think the time has come to slow down to um, make some proper, well thought out, well reasoned decisions for yourself to spend time with your friends, um, to spend time with your family, to let your hair down a little bit, to enjoy life a little bit. And I think life will start to work itself out. So there we go. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that this was worthwhile me doing. Um, please do let me know in the comments if this resonated or what you thought of my processes. Um, actually, thinking about it, I am going to draw an oracle card. I've nearly forgotten those because I put them at the back of the table. But um, with oracle cards... What I found is if you draw a card at the beginning of a reading, it often sets a theme for the reading. Um, and sometimes that's really helpful. And I found if you draw a card at the end of the reading, it can help you to clarify and bring different elements of the reading together um, and give you some kind of last minute advice to move forward with. So that's what I'm doing today with this reading because this reading was about gaining clarity, getting to the root of a problem. So I thought, well, we'll we will try and uncover what the problem actually is with the tarot cards. And then I will draw one of these lovely oracle cards to hopefully give us some good advice and a way forward out of this problem. So these are the Surrender. What are these cards called? Surrender. They're not called Surrender. Do you know, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but each card is a surrender to something. It's this deck here, and I absolutely love them. Um, the box is put away somewhere, and I can't for the life of me, remember what they are. That's terrible, isn't it? But anyway, could we have a card, please, that will help to give guidance and a way forward surrounding this problem, surrounding this issue? Thank you. Thank you. 
And so we have surrender to your soul's path. Your life's journey has been perfectly designed for your soul's growth. Embrace every lesson and every moment. And kind of this is kind of what we've been talking about, isn't it? This has been about decisions and choices on your life path, about things feeling overwhelming, um, about you make having perhaps difficulty making decisions about the way forward. Um, but I think that it's important to realise that this life is designed specifically for you. I. It's actually my belief that we choose our lives. We choose our next incarnation. We know on some level what's coming for us. We know the lessons in life that we need to achieve. Well, certainly if we're spiritual beings, if we're conscious beings, we, on some level, we know our soul's, soul's path. Um... And it's interesting, isn't it, that we've got the King of Swords and the Justice card here with this embrace every lesson and every moment, you know. Even if you think that you've taken the wrong path or you've made unwise decisions, there's always a lesson there. There's always something to learn and there's always um, an opportunity to to change and to um, take a different direction. So I hope that that's been helpful. And um, as I said, please do leave me some comments. Please do let me know what you think of this reading, of my processes um, and anything else that you want to say. Um, I hope to do this again, actually, with perhaps another deck. But anyway, I'll see you again soon. Thank you.